It is 8.45 at night. We're having puppies. Yay! What you doing, hot mama? You ready? You can't come in this bed, sweetie. We're not giving birth in a bed. Hey, peeps. I'm here to remind you to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. And now I'm kicking off a new question of the week. Do you have any whelping tips for newbies? Answer down below in the comments. Come on, go back in the box. Go on. Go on, good girl. Get in there. Good girl. This whole whelping thing is old news to Tipsy. She's a whelping rock star, popping out six puppies with her very first litter. That's the litter that just so happened to introduce us to Boo, Snack, and Fabio. I like to think I'm organized, but I'm honestly usually running around last minute trying to finish stuff up because I have 3,000 things going on at the same time. Whelping this litter was absolutely no different. I had the kiddie pool, which is what I used as a whelping box and all of the blankets and towels in the room, but I didn't have any of my supplies. Tipsy was already in what I call whelp panic mode. So running up and down the stairs to gather what we needed did not help her anxiety one bit. Here we go. This is what I need. Most females become very familiar with the whelping routine after they've had their first litter. Just like when she started panting, she immediately wanted to run upstairs because that's where we whelp. We whelped in the same kiddie pool last time, so why she suddenly was enamored with my bed, I have no idea. Every time I would open the door, she would dart out and run into my bed. This made for a very entertaining 30 minutes. I'm thinking it moved the puppies down. <laughs> It also gave me an opportunity to call my whelping partner in crime, Shelly Rinaldi. I was trying to be quiet so I didn't <laughs> rattle all the Yeah, them. The no, yes. Yeah, yeah. Come on in. I'm coming in. Shelly has been my whelping co-pilot for a multitude of litters. Whether that be watching over FaceTime or just being that voice on the other end of the phone. Watching Tipsy whelp her last litter in person was an amazing event for Shelly because she got to see from start to finish with puppies in sacks and placentas still attached was life altering. Can you see it? Uh-huh. Oh my God. That is so cool. That is bad for gas. <laughs> Even when the whelping goes effortlessly, sometimes things can go wrong. Breeding dogs is a very bittersweet experience, one I do not recommend for the faint of heart. You see, Shelly was also my fellow nursemaid, trying to keep alive one of Tipsy's puppies. She and I worked hand in hand for two straight days, tube feeding, giving oxygen, and doing everything we could to keep her going, but she just didn't have the fight. Poor sweet thing. To say we were excited about the amazing possibilities of another Tino and Tipsy litter is totally an understatement. Waiting for that first puppy to arrive is like waiting for water to boil. Seems to take forever. I was beyond grateful that Shelly was there because I had had a couple of days in a row where I basically had like two hours sleep, seriously struggling to stay awake. So having Shelly there was amazing. She was able to keep watch while I tried to rest and take a nap. I love you, but if you ruin my bed, oh, oh my God. And then another one of our co-pilots joined in. Lana called. You can't come in bed with me. Lana is definitely a wealth of knowledge when it comes to whelping and tending to puppies. She sat with us over the phone, adding her ideas as to what was going on while we sat there and waited for what seemed to be days for the first puppy to arrive. This happens every time, so I don't know why we act so surprised. Once we were done with all of the tipsy whelping conspiracy theories, I laid back down because, oh my God, I just couldn't stay awake. But Tipsy was not going to sit in that whelping box. She wanted to be right next to me no matter what. I, it didn't take long for me to crash. And while I was out cold, thanks to the lovely footage that Shelly was able to capture, it has now been documented that I was not only snoring, but Tipsy was pushing her first puppy out while simultaneously cleaning and licking my face and my arm. Oh my God. Tipsy pushed and pushed and pushed, crawling from beside me until she was right up on top of me, practically laying on my face. That was until I smelled what smelled like poop. I think the smell of poop. Oh, God. She's <laughs> Oh, I feel warmth. Oh, I can't tell. But Is she I think, I think she's... <laughs> Give me birth on my boobs. 
I think she did give birth on your boobs. I'm thinking I might need to change my shirt. Apparently, this breast <laughs> is the best place to give birth. Tipsy's first puppy arrived at 2.30 in the morning on Sunday, May 19th. It was a blue spotted on white female weighing in at a whopping 4.7 ounces. Tipsy truly is an awesome mom. She took right to her new baby along with her job at hand and that would be pushing out the next puppy. What was really cool is that we could actually see the little paws through the sack as it was being pushed out. She took her time as she always does, slowly working them down and out, seemingly without a care in the world. You gonna get the rest of that out of there, Tips? You taking a break? What are we doing? I like her style. All easy breezy, don't rush anything. Just take your time. Take your time. Let it happen and it teaches you a lot. Her second puppy arrived at 2.50 a.m. It was another girl, but this one was black spotted on white and she was a monster, weighing in at five ounces. Now I will say that this line grows on the inside and on the outside. These puppies are gonna like boom and then just bam, slow down, probably about four or five weeks. After a quick water break, she went right back to what Tipsy does best. The third puppy took his own sweet time making his way into the world with another slow and steady wins the race push session, ending with a nice splash at 4 a.m. A black spotted on white boy weighing in at 4.6 ounces. Beautiful markings. I think he's going to be a stunner. There go. Oh, there's another puppy hanging out. Holy mother of Teresa. Holy crap. His adorable brother, another black spotted on white, and what I'm guessing to be the only smooth coat in the litter, arrived at 4.15 a.m., weighing in at 3.7 ounces. He seemed to be racing after his bro or perhaps pushing him out, uh, I don't know. One will never know. Once mom is all done whelping and I've confirmed that there's nothing else in there, I like to take out all of the soiled blankets without disturbing mom too much and then making what I call more of a cave-like setup. I'm trying to mimic something that they might like in the wild. Whelping is all about natural instinct, so I try to help kick that into gear. I will list with links below all of the items that I use for my whelping and nursery setup, as well as the things I store in my whelping and puppy first aid box. <laughs> oh my God, that is totally the way to nurse. Holy That's crap. That Thank is, Good that is it. I'm so excited to share this beautiful litter of two boys and two girls with you. And I promise I will document the first 12 weeks of their life to share with you in a future episode. Until then, congratulations, Tipsy and Tino, on another amazing litter. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss watching these adorable puppies grow into stunning chihuahuas.